the first thing is, well, I just want to know what your view is, because I've seen conflicting reports on your view on this based on my interaction and based on other people asking uh, you some things. So one, one thing I want to know your view on is what is your view of natural human herbivory with respect to getting adequate amounts of dietary vitamin B12? Um, I think the jury, honestly, the jury's still a little bit out. I think there's a lot of different sources that can add up. Like, I think, I think you're right that, um, a good source, although there are like this study I got wrong. There's another study showing higher, like in Mexican water somewhere, it's like significantly higher. It's like notable. Like you can get, and is, it, is it, is it, is it five, six dimethyl benzimidazole ligand B12 or is it just, I mean, I have to look, I haven't looked at the study in a year, but that was, um... well, the, it makes a huge difference. Um, so, so the, uh, the, that was only one part of the problem. So one part of the problem is, you know, sorry, the whoever's, of COVID... whoever's jump master or whatever, can you please ready up? Sorry. I don't know if it's Mike or Hammy. Sorry. My bad. Steak tastes good. So, so there's two, sorry. there's two main in any B12 concentration study, whether it's in water or whether it's in soil or whether it's in fecal matter or whether it's in, whether it's in any na natural source, um, the two main issues that need to be checked are number one, what's the actual concentration of B12, and number two, what percentage of the B12 has uh, five six dimethyl benzimidazole as the ligand, because that is the B12 that we can actually use, and the other B12 with that have other ligands are just pseudo B12. And you find that in a lot of these cases, whether it's soil, and that's what's or, in like that's what's in like seaweed and stuff, right? Yeah, but it's not just it's not just in seaweed. It's it's in it's in it's the over it's the it's ninety eight percent of the B twelve in 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 feces. It's 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 so people like people. One of the things people use to try to make the case of natural is like is eating eating feces sometimes or eating like <laughs> with sanitation issues. Um, but the the, uh, the issue is not only the concentration of B12 in fecal matter. It's also that 98% of that B12 is actually not usable. It's just it's pseudo B12. It doesn't have the proper ligand. And the same thing needs to, is ought to be checked in the um, in the water as well. So there's two issues that need to be checked off. So I'd actually like to see the other study with the concentration of B12 in the, in the water. I'd like to also see if they check for the uh what percentage of that head yeah. yeah one second um that it's it's the study on tar the taro umara hi lindy yeah <laughs> lindy's like <laughs> shut lindy in. one second um i'm looking through it right now i'm just trying to find there's 28 mentions in this of b12 so <laughs> yeah Okay, Mexican City is a B12 content of 0 0.01 to 0 0.7 micrograms per liter. Has been reported in Mexican cities. Oh, unpublished okay. data. Unpublished data, so good luck with that. Wait, 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 hold on. Let's what was what were the numbers? I will send you the exact. 0. Point I mean it's not enough. No, it's not. It doesn't sound like it's even No, it doesn't sound like it's even remotely in the ballpark of being close. Not, en not enough is an understatement. Okay, that it, that just caught. Well, I copied micrograms, and it came out as peak as peak. Peak, oh, peak yeah. No, yeah. no, no, it's not. It actually oh. says micrograms and stuff. Even well, even if it's micrograms, it's not even in, it, it's, it's not even remotely in the ballpark of being close. I mean, look at how many liters you would have to consume to get. I mean, the RDA is what you, the lowest RDA I've seen is like what two point three micrograms a day. Mike, yeah, ready up. Like so, okay. so, in, so, just let's calculate how many liters you would have to consume of this. So, I mean, 2.3, even if we go with the upper limit, let's go with 0 0.07. If we, even if we go, even if we give you the most charitable case, that means every day you would have to consume 32 liters of this water. I mean, I that's, still think what the, I, the case that I was making is that it could come from a bunch of different. So if you drink a liter, that is it really? One second, let me look at B12. Even, that's, uh, the, that's the upper limit. If we take the average. I mean, if we took the average of that, just with the numbers you're giving me, um, one point eight, come out yeah, to, two point four adults. Yeah, it would come out to if we take the average, it'll come out to over fifty liters of water you would have to drink of this just to meet your RDA. I mean, you get yeah, ba I mean, basically no nothing of your RDA from. Yeah, and I'm saying that it's possible if 
you know, that there are higher sources of water. Maybe there aren't, but if you get, you know, maybe well, like three or three on. or four percent from that, and then if you're getting, I I think the main source would probably not showering, not being hygienic, and getting like trace amounts of fecal matter and various. Is is there nutrients. trace? No trace. Trace amounts of fecal matter wouldn't do it either. You'd actually have to eat pounds. You'd have to eat pounds of fecal matter, or at least at least quarter pounds of fecal matter, exactly. uh, in order to get in order to get the RDA of. Uh, of B12. And the reason for that is because 98% with the, that also has a very generous assumption of no competition between the B12 that doesn't have that ligand and the B12 that does. So you, you, you would actually, it's not trace amount. Trace amounts wouldn't do anything for you for the RDA of B12. Hello, am I I'm in like five clearly? conversations right now. One second. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I definitely have to see proof that <clears throat> the the B12 and fecal matter is not actually usable. Mm -hmm, Especially because sure. if we're looking at, I mean, I guess you could look at other digestive systems of herbivores and their B12. So, for example, where would so so where would a ruminant get it? So you're saying that in ruminants they're making B12 that's usable, but they in also human well, colon, it's not. Yeah, the 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 well in the human they don't. The issue is that the usable B12, there's an issue of usable B12 getting converted into non-usable B12. And, um, and that happens, That we know that that happens, at least, at least we know it happens at some point. It certainly happens by the time, by the colon, because that's when it's after, shortly. And after yeah, I'd like to, i definitely like to see proof sure. of that. Yeah, 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 I can send that. Hold yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and then the other issue is with other ruminants, the other ruminants have, capacity for b12 for a number of reasons because um first of all they they i don't believe they only have and i could be wrong about this but i don't believe their their only absorption avenue of b12 is the terminal ileum which it is in humans in humans the there's like a one little area of the of the small intestine where b12 can be absorbed and i don't think that's necessarily the case in ruminants i don't think that's analogous um yeah, I'm just wondering I, if yeah. if they're able to absorb. Yeah, okay, okay. So you're saying they're able to absorb usable B12 before it becomes unusable, in theory. Um, another one, which is a possibility that I've looked at, which I don't put a lot of stock in, but this study right here, which is you know it's from the 80s, who really knows? But uh, let me link it. That is vitamin B12 synthesis by human small intestinal bacteria. So. This was them measuring people in India actually producing some in their small intestine. And my guess is it's actually a result of a little bit of like SIBO because it's colonic bacteria making it to the small intestine, right? Let me just read the study because um, we only have an abstract. Yeah, you can just search for the title on one minute. Well, he reads that. Ready up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm not going to be able to look up things. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a terrible person. Human okay. feces contain a okay. Human feces contain appreciable quantities of vitamin B12 or vitamin B12-like material. I like okay. I like it how they said that because they're saying yeah, vitamin B12 or vitamin B12-like material. So they're opening the possibility that this B12 is pseudo B12. So I that's that's uh, that I like. Um, presumably, it says presumably produced by bacteria. Fine, but this is unavailable to the non-coprophagic individual. However, the human small intestine also harbors considerable amount of microflora and is even more extensive in apparently the southern Indian subjects. We show that at least two groups of organisms, the bowel, pseudomonas, and the yellow, may contribute small, significant, may, may synthesize significant amounts of the vitamin. Yeah. So I would need to see how much of that is expected to actually get to the to the ileum, um, and yeah, that's that's what I would what I would have to see. But I I don't. Yeah, I haven't seen really. I, I, 
a case for that. But the other, the biggest. Yeah, let me hear. Here is here's that, another nature. Well, here, but here, but here's, but here's the biggest. Sure. Here's the biggest issue is that the biggest issue is that it needs to be shown that this B12 is actual is not pseudo B12. It needs yeah. you need to separate this B12 from the pseudo B12. Um, and from everything, I, from what I've read on the topic, and I can go because I actually looked at this, the, this very study today, um, on my work computer. But I can look it up again. But what I've seen, the data I've seen is that ninety-eight percent of it of the B twelve in fecal matter is actually just pseudo B twelve. Yeah, but even if ninety-eight percent of it is pseudo B twelve, and there's enough, if there's still, yeah, you know, yeah, one, two, and, but but two, and there is, and I remember, I remember calculating. And and there would have been there would be enough if you ate a quarter pound of of shit every day. <laughs> okay, we'll send it to me. <laughs> so um, so, what, so what, here's my question for you. Then what do you think? So you're just saying that humans weren't naturally herbivores, and that we were always getting yeah. some sorts of B12 through some type of yeah. Product. I think I think my my position is that um, natural human herbivory is not actually compatible. So what I'm, about I'm, some I'm, of our, our so our ancestors that were like more more or less mm -hmm. considered to be entirely vegetarian? I'm, I don't want to get. I, I don't think they were vegan. They were definitely not vegan. No, I don't think they were vegan. I think they ate insects. I they they, they worms. I think those those there are some. Yeah, I don't think there was insects, ever. Yeah. I don't think there was ever a reason for any of our ancestors to not be eating mm -hmm. insects. But and I do much... know that the insects contain. There are insects that do contain B12. There are, but how much does the average insect take, and then how are I, how are these? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, but I, yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I don't know ex exactly how much, but it, I do know that they had a, they had a dietary source of B twelve. They certainly did, and that they, they, and it was not, uh, and that on a vegan diet, I'm convinced. So I don't say so would it be enough? I don't know, but what I am very confident of is without a dietary source of B twelve at all. I don't actually believe that that's compatible uh, with life, and I don't think a vegan I don't think a vegan diet naturally would give a sufficient quantity of dietary B12 in any in a practical way in a natural setting. I, and I I'm and all the cases where I've seen to try to make this case, and I'm always really weirded out by why this case has been tried to be made. I'm weirded out by why vegans are so insistent that. There could have been some way to naturally get this B12, and I, I know why they're doing it. I know why they want to be have because like, there's some weird implication that there's this death blow or whatever to veganism if it can be shown that oh, it's you couldn't do this naturally, and it's just I think it's just so silly. Like okay, so it's we you can't do it naturally. Great, we're not we're not in that situation. Do it not naturally. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, the argument, I mean, for me, it's looking at, okay, why are these disease rates so lower? Why do people reverse, you know, various diseases, et cetera? Oh, it must be more or less natural. I don't have a problem with being like, yeah, we were 98 to 99% herbivorous. And there was some type of, some type of animal input that, you know, whether it was insects or something that did give B12, like, I don't think that hurts it. I just look, look to it as why are we suited to this particular diet? And it makes no sense that we've you know that we're eating animal products if we are you know if our digestion if our digestive tract hasn't evolved to be the right length etc et cetera. wait what wait hold on if our digestive tract has evolved what do you i'm mean? talking about for maybe example why maybe why we can't handle cholesterol or just why have we not made anatomical adaptations well to eating we're one? not the only ones who can't what we're not the only ones who can't handle cholesterol i mean cats yeah, if enough, if you, with enough cholesterol, cats can't handle cholesterol. Yeah, but I feel like that's one of. I mean, there's just so many. I I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the chart. Half the and my we're going to have a lot to disagree on. I think actually half of the claims in that chart are actually just straight up false. That that chart that compares like these makes these anatomical. I know you've made a video about this too. Yeah, and a I'm lot of people look at it yeah. and they get it wrong. I'm not saying you did this, but a lot I, of and I know, and I know, I know, I know, I know the way that you think people get it wrong when they are looking at the um, when they look at. Are you talking about the case where they measure it from the pelvis instead of where they measure it from the the total trunk length instead of the pelvis or the total yeah. height instead of from the pelvis? Yeah. So I, I actually looked into that. I'm aware of your defense of that. I'm aware of your defense of that, and I still think that fails. Um, so because when I actually looked at the comparative anatomy, I'm not, I actually couldn't, couldn't standardize it to the, any given metric. So, for example, when I tried to line up 
uh, carnivores and herbivores and do it based on the pelvis, do it based on just pelvis length to show a girdle length or something. I'm not aware of any data that does it consistently across humans and other animals, and I'm not able to. to I would make say it's a general and... trend. I looked at a few. No, I'm not. I, I'm not able to do that. Yeah, no, but I'm not able to do that and point humans in in the herbivore category based on that. And I would like to see you do it if you can. I mean, I looked up and a the few. Other... I remember looking up, um, double the... checking. What was it? Rabbits, the other... chimpanzees, lions. Yeah. Just a quick. Check. The other thing is there's counter. You also have to deal with countervalent aquatic mammalian who have these really, really long intestines. And they're completely And I think there's carnivorous. exceptions. Like, for example, why yeah. do octopus, why do octopi have eyes on the side of their head? It's actually, they're predators, but they're in a different environment. I think there's obviously exceptions, but, you know, within, like, land, mammals, and... Yeah, various, can you, you know. I would like, so I would like to actually see even that. Because I, when I, I don't think when, I think when we're looking at humans and when we look from, when, when we look at that standardized metric, and I, in fact, I think I typed this out a long time ago. Um, let me just let me just search real quick. Because um, I mean, when you're adding various things together, you're talking about teeth. You're talking about um, a lot of things that do vary a lot, like litter size. But we still fit as a general trend very much toward. I'm not. I'm not convinced of that. No, I think. I think we actually don't. I think like when you look at things like okay, here we go. So like it, when you actually look at these different things like stomach and pH of stomach acid, um, I think we don't fit into the herbivorous category. I think we actually fit into uh, a very. We fit very well into the omnivorous category. Actually, we fit in perfectly well into scavenger category. That scavengers meat both meat and. Uh, well, actually, more specifically, meat they would usually. But, and then, okay, so here we go. So, human GI length is 10 to 12. And I'll, I'll go with your correction, too, because I know your, your correction. Human GI length is 10 to 12 times body length, similar to herbivores, not 4 to 6 times body length found in omnivores. So, um, so this is, so I know people pointed this out and later in the video, but what they pointed out was that the human GI tract length is around 30 feet in length compared to the average human height of 5.7 ratio of 5.26. But now you pointed out that's trunk length. You want to use trunk length instead of body length. Well, trunk length, um, it has to be. Otherwise, yeah. well, if you're, when you're talking leg length all of a sudden, yeah, then. Exactly. Cause they're, they're walking on those legs. So if mm -hmm. you want to use trunk length instead of body length, it needs to be consistent with animals too. Um, but there's no citation for a standard using trunk length instead of body length across the board that I'm that I'm seeing in any of the, the, the data. I mean, you measure a and, dog, where are you measuring? I mean, you're measuring from their hips to their neck, right? You're not stretching their legs out I'm, and going, okay. I'm not, I'm not clear on that. That reminds me of the traumatic memories. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clear that that's the case. And you also then, and we would have to include. You would have to account for. Um, you would just have to also account for all the aquatic mammals, like all of these, all the aquatic mammals that have these incredibly long intestines. And there's a huge litany of them. It's not like these one-off exceptions. There's just one aquatic mammal after another that's purely carnivorous that have these really long intestines. Um, and I just don't, and I, I just don't see why. I mean, I think we're talking, we we're talking about like trends within land animals in a, in yeah. a ton of different, in a ton of different metrics. And I just don't, I don't think like one, some aquatic carnivores having longer digestive system is, is enough to just like completely cancel it. Yeah. I mean, then I, I, but then I would just see, yeah, I would, I would like to see, I would like to see it shown with humans, um, the human GI tract. Uh, compared to the the trunk length with animal GI tract compared to the trunk length and where humans fit in, and I would like to see the data that it's because body length and trunk length actually I, I'm not going to take it pr prima facie to be the case that body when they say body length versus trunk length in an animal that they mean the same thing. Yeah, I mean that's fair enough, and I will say, backing up, I do agree that it doesn't matter. Like I'm not putting a lot of weight on this argument as an argument in general, but I still feel like I'm going to base my view of it off the data that I've seen. And so if I, unless, you know, I'm not going to be convinced that, oh shit, sorry, we're getting shot at like a lot. It's really hard for me to focus. <laughs> but, um, 
No, sorry, I'm getting like naded right now. This is why I normally don't talk to people while playing this game. But basically, if my main motivation for saying that a vegan diet is healthier and that there's a major health aspect, well, to we're not diet, talking about we're not we're not talking yeah, about yeah. health. We're, we're, we're not, we're, we're but, talking about something irrelevant. Then I back up to this based off my health position is, okay, why are these people on a, on a plant-based diet so much healthier? Oh, maybe it's our, and this is, this is, yeah, this is the dangerous thing. This is the, this is the, this is the, this is the view. This is the view that I find so dangerous when vegans go to. I actually think, I actually, I str so strongly, like this triggers, this thought process, I, I have to tell you, Mike, how much this triggers me. This thought process, I think, I, I this thought process, I think, is one of the most dangerous things a vegan could go down. It has the implication that that which we are not ad adapted to, that that diet that which we are adapted to, somehow entails some sort of health outcomes. That not are uh, okay. I would say, or or aver on average gives you this great or this 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 better than average health outcome in some way that entails and so you're, literally, you're literally saying health. that somebody who's on a, a vegan diet isn't going to have a better than average health outcome no 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 that's not what i'm no 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 that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying <laughs> not at all not at all what i'm saying is that if they do have an on average on average health ben, ben, uh, higher than average health um health outcomes then it is not because it is not in virtue of their vegan diet being something they're adapted to to have it is it not is not necessarily in virtue of them it being adapted to that diet adapt being adapted to a diet does not entail having an average higher better or better health outcome on that yeah diet. i mean i would agree to that to an extent like for example you could have a better health health outcome if you take an animal within their natural diet where they could actually still be missing nutrients within their natural diet and then giving them those nutrients. Mm -hmm. They would probably live longer and be healthier, but there's still a general trend of what have we consumed for hundreds of thousands, millions of years. How did that ch change how we deal with things like saturated fat, how we deal with various nutrients, you know, and, and how, you know, what causes inflammation, what doesn't cause inflammation, what, you know, how we how antioxidants affect our body versus how they might affect a carnivore or something. And I think they all add up to say that that there is a good reason, but I don't think it has to be an argument like, oh, you need to go vegan because it's what we naturally <sighs> ate. Yeah, and I just want to be very clear that, that the, the reason the reason veganism um, can be healthy has is should not be linked up. Should I, I really, really want to stress this to anyone listening. The reason veganism is healthy should not be linked up to our evolutionary history. And I think I think it's so tenuous and so speculative, and the case is so weak. I the the best cases to make are just outcome based metrics to look at to look at just okay we have our prospective cohorts what ends up happening. So why do you think these um, people are doing better? Yeah. Why do you think they're doing better? I don't. I don't. Like biological I don't. anatomical basis or yeah. like history. No, it's not that I don't have any anatom any any basis for doing better. I just don't think it necessarily follows from the evolutionary history of the things that they have eaten previously. Not necessary. It could. It's it certainly could, but it's not necessary. So I can explain why they're doing better. So what I'd say not necessary. Very different than like something that sh is it should be a taboo to. to to, no, no, no. I'm not. Yeah, no. It's a taboo that it, the taboo is that it, there's an implication that there's that necessary entail. That's that's what seems. That's what is triggering. What triggers me is there seems to be this this implication of a necessary entailment between that which is a, that which we have adapted to eat in our evolutionary history and what results in a health outcome. And I think that is very, very cringy. And I hate what I hate it when vegans imply this. I hate it when vegans go there because it's so it's such bullshit. It's completely wrong. On so I mean, many it's hard levels. to say. I mean, if you have if you are having some dairy based autoimmune rea reaction or literally a lactose intolerance, you have a health outcome that is based off you consuming lactose, which you have not naturally your ancestors have not naturally consumed. And you have a problem like that is just such a solid example. That doesn't, yeah, it, it, yeah, no, sure. You can give a case where it, it is the case. Again, I'm not saying again. What's cringy is not saying that there could be a case that is entailed from that. What's cringy is that trying to make that a general rule. A prescription. You're saying you're making yeah, it a prescription. prescription. Well, I mean that that I that like is at the that's very least that's it's cringy. saying at the very least it's saying you should have a choice to do this diet based off 
there being a pretty good case that we ate a lot of plants in history. That's that's see that's where I would just see that's where I where I would say that's very dangerous. I say I would say that that is a something. So what do you think is going to happen? Like you think people are going to be like, oh oh my god, I'm going to follow this sort of like appeal to nature veganism, and then I'm not going to reverse every disease ever. So no, I I think it's I think it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous because it's because it's false. I think it's dangerous because it doesn't follow. It's that it's truth is valuable in its own sake. I think it's dangerous because there's no general prescription that entails what we've naturally and adapted to eat has some kind of connection with uh, health outcome. I, I don't think the case has ever been made that there's this general trend like that. There are certainly cases where that's true, but it doesn't follow that. There are certainly cases where that's completely false as well. I mean, there are certain you would certainly grant that. The, lacto- the lactose in the in the twenty percent of humans or twenty five percent of humans or whatever that have the lactase or th- even thirty five percent that have the lactase persistence phenomenon, uh, you would certainly grant that that doesn't entail that milk is healthy for those people. Yeah, w- right. So I mean, there's the, I'm, what I'm saying is that I, I haven't seen it shown that there is a general trend that. That which we have, and you, and just to be clear, you would certainly agree that that is an evolutionary adaptation to to drinking milk. It's very hard to deny that. Yeah, it's an evolutionary ad, an adaptation to drinking to including milk in the diet, but not yeah. necessarily yeah. that it will give you a healthy outcome that we've adapted to. Right. Exactly. Factors. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I, I mean, just some people shown... have adapted to eating humans, or sorry, some yeah, some people right. in exactly. <laughs> uh, Papua New Guinea. Exactly. So, so I haven't. All I'm saying is I haven't been shown it to be the case that there is this general trend that that which we've adapted to eat somehow entails a positive health outcome. But I, I would also those. differentiate like late stage evolution. Like we know that's within the last 10. Like large anatomical features that have formed over hundreds of thousands. I don't see of I don't see the prescription for either. I don't think the case has been made for either. And I, would I don't think to, a like... trend has been made for either. And if you could think you can make the case for either, I would like to see it. I don't think you can. Yeah, I mean, I'm like playing playing a game. No, no, no. I don't. I don't, for... I don't think. I don't. I don't <laughs> think like you can with years, all the studies but... at your with all the studies at the fingertips. I don't think you can if you weren't at the game. Quickly, I'd Mike, like to make, see it. Make the make the case. Well, yeah, make the case. Well, not dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please. So, I, okay, I just want to, I feel like there's a couple, I guess I, I we might as well just table this conversation because there's going to be things in like five or six different traits about the human body that I think are adapted at the, like the most persuasive ones that I should, I can just throw together a few for another time. But um, you're welcome to, I, I think this was one of many things that you uh, thought I was wrong about. So you're welcome to. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, other things, um, yeah, TMAO. Um, TMAO, I'm just going to do this straight up. It doesn't cause heart disease. Um, yeah, it's, very, it's It's actually just a confa- The associations turn out to be a complete confounder when the Mendelian randomization studies have been run. So what about um, the study where they gave people um, some choline supplements, vegans choline supplements, yeah. and their platelet mm-hmm. aggregation went up and their TMO levels went up. Yeah, so that's that's platelet aggregation is a mechanistic speculation. It doesn't necessarily terminate in cardiovascular disease. But it ha- but so then why did it happen? You're, say- why you're did saying it happen? It's, it's okay. Yeah, it it's okay that their platelet okay. aggregation went up. No, I'm saying no. What I'm saying what I'm saying is that it doesn't necessarily terminate in cardiovascular disease. You're saying that might and not it, necessarily. And it, and it yeah. Be or it says, a negative or it says, outcome. By like people having increased platelet aggregation. Which yes, is that's one that's absolutely main. correct. That is absolutely correct. One. So you're saying increased correct. platelet aggregation doesn't actually increase risk. Doesn't ne- doesn't necessarily depending on the de- depending on the degree and other factors. So you're increase, saying all these things increased like increased platelet increased platelet aggregation. I want to be very clear. This, increased platelet aggregation does not absolutely does not necessarily entail an increased risk of cardiovascular disease outcome. And when we actually run the data that actually. Lo- Look th- and tries to answer that, which is what the Mendelian randomization studies do. They actually separate that out and actually say, okay, well, do they actually have, when they had bi- biologically predicted higher levels of TMAO in their blood, did they actually end up having increased risk of cardiovascular disease? And the answer time and time again was no. But they do you have data have. showing large, yes. like groups of vegans, yes. groups of vegans mm-hmm. with higher versus lower levels of TMAO, like if you were to randomize a group of vegans into mm-hmm. A choline supplementation group, supplement group, which of course means they're going to produce TMAO, and one that mm-hmm. doesn't, you can say with certainty that that group of high choline vegans would not have an increased risk of heart disease. 
I don't. I don't think an. We're talking no, about standard of, American people. So the have... answer. You've asked me a question. I'll answer your question. So you've yeah. you've asked me a question. Is there a randomized control trial uh, that has been performed and has looked at cardiovascular outcomes? And to my best of my knowledge, the answer is I don't think a, a randomized control trial has been performed that has examined cardiovascular disease outcome. Now, the second best thing has been done. Though. The second best thing is something called the Mendelian randomization study. A Mendelian randomization study would be the would be second best. It would be superior to a prospective cohort study, but it would be inferior to a ma a, a randomized controlled trial. And the, what the Mendelian randomization studies do end up showing is that over is that time it's, is that when actually you know what let me just get the study. Okay, when you get it, um, I, I was saying that to say that this study doesn't exist. We're looking at the studies that you're talking about are. I believe on people who have a lot of risks for heart disease. They they're, also they're, have... they're on both. They're the studies that are on, on, on massive population scales. They're going to include vegans. They're going to include vegetarians. They're going to include omnivores. They're going to include. But I'm people saying, if you're going to make order. a recommendation for mm -hmm. vegans, I just I just don't think you can sort of yeah. say that 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 TMAO won't yeah. cause. I'm saying no, no. I'm saying there's no. I'm saying there's no evidence that it does. There's no evidence that TMAO causes heart disease. But I'm you still saying, think that look, it could cause heart disease in vegans. Look, there, anything could cause heart... No, no, no. I'm saying there's no evidence that it causes heart disease in vegans. There's no I'm evidence there's that there's no causes evidence heart disease that it doesn't in any group. cause heart disease in vegans. Okay, well, listen. Well, listen. Well, listen. Well, wait a minute. Then why are we... <laughs> that could be true of anything. That could be true of apples. There's no evidence I'm just that... I'm saying I don't There's no don't evidence that apples... There's no evidence that strawberries doesn't cause heart, heart disease in vegans. There's no evidence that apples doesn't cause heart disease in vegans. If, you're, if your standard is that there's no evidence, look, you, look, that's the whole point. You can't actually, we're not proving a null. Studies I'm saying, don't yeah, but I'm saying hypothesis. we need to be cautious here in that you shouldn't be saying that there's no risk of this when there potentially... There's no evidence. There's no evidence that there is, there's no evidence that there is a risk. I'm not saying that it's not possible that there is a risk. I'm just saying that based on the available data, there really is no evidence that a risk... So do you, do you like, a bottom of your heart believe if you were to take, like, a million vegans who had higher mm -hmm. platelet aggregation from TMAO, mm -hmm. from, sure. from choline supplements, and a million sure. vegans that didn't have that you mm -hmm. honestly think there would be no difference between these i would be no, i would i believe that there would be no statistically significant difference that's correct mm -hmm. absolutely and that's where i just feel like and that's I born, and that's born out and that is and that and that is and that is and that's implicated by by the medallion randomization studies that show that and again, and again, you're not going to be able to appeal to this difference between vegans and non-vegans because again, it's a mendelian randomization study. Mm -hmm. The randomization occurred prior to birth. That's the whole point of a Mendelian randomization study. So all of these different factors are going to equalize out on both sides. And so when they when they look at the Mendelian randomization study and they see which who has biologically higher levels of TMAO that are predicted by the single nucleotide polymorphism, which is the second thing the second best you're ever going to get to a randomized controlled trial, you see no difference whatsoever in cardiovascular disease outcome. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. You don't see it. And I think do you want to know my and take you, on this and TMA and you, in and general. I, I will. I will. But I just want to make it very clear. You're not going to be able to say to appeal to a, a, an excuse that well, they this was a general population who wasn't vegans because whatever predicates you want to assign to the vegan group to try to make a symmetry breaker, the randomization is already accounting for that prior to birth. That's the point of the Mendelian randomization study. All right, I'd have to look at those, but the point that what I feel like it could be, and again, like I haven't looked at these particular Mendelian studies that you're talking about, but it seems to me that there are so many things within that diet that can be damaging arteries that I still feel like it could be lost in noise. And you can, you totally, know, you can go through totally fine. I, I, I don't have a problem with saying that. I just have a problem <clears> with saying that it's TMAO. I don't, I don't, I'm not denying that there's, there are things within animal products that damage arteries. I agree with that. I think and so LDL, my question is, how do I you, cholesterol, how, how yeah. have they appropriately separated sure. TMAO from yes. animal products when they're... Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you, I'll answer. So one example is that a Mendelian randomization study has been done on certain products that are in animal products that are, that, uh, for example, saturated fat and, uh, and uh, LDL cholesterol. So for example, LDL cholesterol is cholesterol and saturated fat is in animal products as well as TMAO. 
And Mendelian randomization studies have been done on both LDL cholesterol and TMAO. And in the case of LDL cholesterol, the Mendelian randomization studies are very clear that those who have the biological, the single nucleotide polymorphisms that predict the higher levels of LDL do in fact get cardio, worse cardiovascular disease outcomes. And those who have the biologically predicted higher levels of TMAO from the single nucleotide polymorphisms do not end up having worse cardiovascular disease outcome. Okay, now can we now get so to So that's my... how I would separate. I that's the answer to, my... to your question, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I want to get to my official view on TMAO is that okay. I believe that it's a very likely culprit to be a contributor, but I do also believe that it is dwarfed by things like saturated fat. Okay, I would just I would just need to see the data on what basis and, and where it stands in the evidence hierarchy. While why it's very likely to be a contributor, not a confounder. Because this, the whole point of a Mendelian randomization study is it's precisely to separate a contributor from a confounder. Uh, that's the entire that's the whole reason why the Mendelian randomization study was done because they didn't know if TMAO was a confounder or a contributor. They had prospective cohort studies, and what they found in the prospective cohort studies was, was there was a statistically significant difference when you had TMAO levels above six point something micro, I forget if it's micromoles per liter, I think that's what it was last I looked at it, but under six point something micromoles per liter, under that concentration, TMAO didn't seem to matter. There was no association between that and heart. But above that association, there was, and about 85% and about of Omnivores had lower than that, and about 15% of omnivores had TMAO levels that were actually a problem. If that was, if that association was called. Yeah. So, so I still, I still want to back up to this. But, so we have again. Can you wait, explain to me why why you mm -hmm. actually think that raising platelet mm -hmm. aggregation in in a vegan population wouldn't be harmful? Mm -hmm. I guess still, yeah. I guess still, so, so okay. platelet, yeah, because raising platelet, raising platelet aggregation doesn't necessarily entail cardiovascular disease. It's but it's when you are, like, for example, let's say you have mm -hmm. some vegans that end up getting high cholesterol for various reasons. Maybe they're eating a lot of coconut oil or they're eating a lot mm -hmm. of high saturated fat from other things. Mm -hmm. You still feel like, you know, they're probably, they'll probably be just fine with higher platelet aggregation as oh, well as that. It's, like, even if there are I would, multiple... It, it, so, so the answer the answer is it depends on the degree of platelet aggregation. So that's one. You'd have to look at what degree it is and what, and what degree is actually terminating out. See, this is why it's always important to terminate. To Whenever you have a mechanistic study that results, whether it's platelet aggregation or endothelial functionality, you need to correlate that with what degree does that predict an outcome. To what degree of platelet? Because other than that, it's very, very speculative and very mechanistic. It's, it's what is it? There's a pejorative term that's used a lot in the server called, and I, I actually coined it, unfortunately. It's called mechanistic speculation. So the, the issue is what you would have to do is you would have to see what degree of platelet aggregation is being increased and what degree of cardiovascular disease that actually predict among the people, these people who have this degree of cholesterol. So in a lot of cases, there's very varying degrees of platelet aggregation. And in most cases, it's not in there's a normal variability the first the first thing you would have to see is this increase is it out of the norm that's the first thing so is it first well there's i mean well a normal like normal is standard american population of kids well no well kids. well no no well 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 hold on by normal You're within no, the norm no, of well, within, within the norm within the, well, the way you can define it within the norm of vegans we could define it within the norm really really the way it should be defined is within the norm of of what it would not be associated with a health outcome. This is why I always go back to terminating and health, health, health outcomes. I don't really consider mechanistic data to be that useful if it's not linked to a, a, an accounting of a health outcome, because then it's just purely speculative. Because if we say that this platelet aggregation increased by 5%, now, in increasing platelet aggregation by 5% in various populations, what does that end up doing? It could, it could end up doing nothing. It could end up, it could end up causing ischemic heart disease. It could, end up in, it could end up, and you may be completely surprised to find out, like, contrary to everything we know about it, it ends up reducing ischemic heart disease. You have no idea. But once we, if we were to able to terminate it in an outcome and say, okay, it predicts this amount, and this is out of the normal, and it turns out like 5% actually makes no difference at all. You actually have to get to 50% or 55%, and then you start seeing a difference in ischemic heart disease. Then that's useful information, because that tells you that if this increases platelet aggregation, and it makes you go from 5% to 10%, it actually doesn't do anything at all. Versus if it made you go from 5% to 60%, 
then that's useful information. So the answer to your question is, it all depends on what degree it is, and it depends on the other contextual factors that relate to plate aggregation. But all I, if someone just shows that this increased platelet aggregation, and then there's other data showing that, well, apparently this does increase platelet aggregation, but apparently it didn't end up resulting in any difference. Because I, I'm going to go with the data that terminated in the outcome. The data that terminated in the outcome are the Mendelian randomization studies, which ended up showing that despite the fact that TMAO may result in increased platelet aggregation, it actually didn't change anything in terms of cardiovascular disease. In a population that's like 98% in, not. Sure, which by the way, which by the way, is the population you want to study. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because the po because the vegan population would you would actually expect the problem to be in that population, not the vegan population. So the we see about, is because, yeah, it's about wait, a hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me finish. And I'll let you, what just to be clear, ten percent rise in what? Ten percent rise in platelet aggregation percentage okay. of max. And so and so what I would oh, what I would. What I would need to, so then just, uh, I'll go back to the point, but just what I, I don't want to get off topic, but what I would need to see is temp, what does that correlate to in, a, in an outcome? Maybe even so, 15. Yeah. So what does that, what does that correlate to an outcome? Because what I'm, I'm not impressed by 10 to 15% of platelet, ag of platelet aggregation increase at all. Like I'm, I, I, I wouldn't look at that and be Well, like, that puts, oh, that's, I could be right, but that puts your vegan yeah. high, as high as your omnivore. Wait, what? One second. I got it. It's it's a. I can't just between games. But look, here here's here's the really. here's the main point. Here, here's here's the point I, I I need to drive home. Um, and I I did get a little bit off track just now. Um, but the point is, you would expect the population you actually want to study, if you want to expect a difference in in health outcome, is actually not the vegan population for TMAO. It actually is the omnivore population. And the reason why is because. There's only been an association for any, there's only been a statistically significant association for any health outcome. I've, I'm almost positive I've read this study in full on, on the stream with Isaac. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, I actually, still... no, I don't think I have. No, no, this yeah, is check it out. In. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still. Okay, I will check it out. <clears throat> but wait, wait, I, let me just finish the point, Mike. Yeah. Um, the point is. You actually wouldn't expect the health outcome differences to be in the vegan population unless you're ridiculously increasing TMAO. You would actually expect, if you were going to do a study that on a Medellin randomization study, the appropriate subjects are omnivores to, to determine if TMAO causes heart disease. And the reason is, is because the association of TMAO and heart disease actually doesn't exist at vegan levels. It doesn't actually, within subjects of vegans that have this, the vegan range of TMAO, there's no statistically significant difference in heart disease in, within that range at all. You can increase it or decrease it yeah, within that range. But this is no greater than tenfold increase in uh, plasma TMA levels here. Yeah. Well, 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 no, 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 no. no. Let's, well, ten, that doesn't. The tenfold is just a rel tenfold increase is just a relative increase. That could that could very well be within a range that doesn't make any difference. But so for example, puts if a the, vegan well, no, no, up wait, hold on. Area. No, it does. No, it not doesn't necessarily because it could, if it's point one and then it's a tenfold difference, you get a TMAO level of one. And that, but and if you look at the charts, you can absolute... see that they they come into the same range of TMAO when when the vegans well, are given. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I'm not talking about. No, wait, hold on. I'm not I'm not talking about. You look. You said a tenfold in what a tenfold increase of TMAO, and you said I just read a, what the I'm, last quote before we started on. playing okay. the game. All I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that if you were. If you were going to expect a difference, from, uh, if you were going to examine an outcome difference from a tenfold increase in TMAO, based on the available data we have, that would be more. It would seem to be more pronounced in omnivores than vegans. You would actually still want to study the omnivores, and here's why: because at the levels that vegans have, there's actually there's vegans that have 0.1. There's vegans that have 0.3. If you if you increase, there's a vegan who has a 0.3 and you increase it tenfold, you get three. That actually is not even that difference isn't going to result in any statistically significant difference in association with that tenfold difference. Now, if you talk about an omnivore, it absolutely would. An omnivore would be pushed. Almost every omnivore would a tenfold increase would be pushed from the, an area that's been this not associated to associated with a statistically significant increase in risk. Of, of of cardiovascular disease an omnivore a tenfold increase is much more likely to push them into that risk range than a vegan would be so, so you're saying you TMAO a, does yeah. increase mm -hmm. risk 
You're no, no, no. I'm not. I'm saying. I'm saying. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that the association study, where TMAO, the levels at which TMAO is associated with cardiovascular disease, don't become statistically significant until six point something micromolars per liter. And so, because of and, and what I'm also saying is that vegans have very, very low levels of TMAO. So a tenfold increase in TMAO if you start from 0.3 and go to three. You wouldn't even, even if that was causal, you wouldn't actually expect to pick it up in the Mendelian randomization study. You wouldn't actually expect to pick anything up, even if the TMAO was causal, if you were to run it on vegans. But if you would run it on omnivores and the effect was causal, you would actually expect to see it. So the same tenfold increase would actually result, result in a, if it was causal, if it is true that it would cause cardiovascular disease, the ten, same tenfold increase you would see it, you would see that increased risk in cardiovascular disease more likely in an omnivore than a vegan. Um, yeah, sorry, I have to stop talking now. Okay. <laughs> but um, it's good to talk to you. I still, yeah, yeah. I still feel like I think it's worth taking a cautious, like, anti-supplement. Like, I just talked to Joel Kahn today. And he's oh, like, no. I just, no, I know I, he's probably, crazy. I know he's he's like, fucking approach. crazy. Oh, I, no, no, yeah. he's, I, I think he's nuts. He's the complete. He, but he saw this study. He saw this Mendelian randomization study on TMAO. I know he's the TMAO guy. I spoke to Joel Kahn too. I know he's the TMAO guy. I, I he saw the study. I know he saw the study because on Facebook I saw he commented on the study. And he's and he just it, it was it was nonsense what he commented. It was just like he just went off about him the same same points. Like I I, I couldn't take it. Like he just does. He'll just re, he just rejected it. Oh, it's just one study. Like he TMAO is his baby, and he's just committed to it. He's just yeah, straight my, up which is my point was that he was saying that if TMAO le o levels in vegans that take choline go above a certain level, then they should stop taking. Like, I just feel like it's still worth it no. to be cautious of TMAO. Like, there's no advantage of being like, nope. oh, let's just not worry about TMAO. Like, sure, vegans vegans should no, feel we, fine. We, like, I don't slamming think there's their any TMAO reason. High. I don't think I don't think there's any. Well, look, Even anything you said at the point of slamming it point, too high. Like, no, if, if you get over, well, hold 0. on. 5. Here's what I've here's what I've said. If you get over a certain point. There is an association, not if you get over it, but there's association with people who have a TMAO level above a certain point in cardiovascular disease. Now, the question is, is that an association a confounder or is it causal? Now, if you want to do a study to detect if it was a confounder or causal, you would want to look at people who, who have, a, you'd want to do a Mendelian randomization study among people who have different levels of this, this TMAO. And you would want that range the best place to start would be to have that range go above and below the area where which there's the statistically associate statistically significant association. Now, and the best way to do that is to do the study on omnivores, not vegans, is what I'm saying. I just really quickly, this is probably the last thing I can say, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what we'd have to. I have to compare the units at another time, but I'm seeing sure. like millimoles or whatever, or micro moles yeah. or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like up around like go starts at two, goes to like seventeen. And I think yeah, and where and where does it become statistically? Is, is, is this the New England? Did you just say it was at six? Uh, no, six is where it becomes. Six is where six points. I don't know if it's Mike. I will have to check the units. Um, it was. No, let me check it. Um, here it's in. I have it. I have it. Uh, I have it in my arm. Okay, well, that was that's like the last thing I can say. But wait, what was the last thing? thing? <laughs> I'm saying that's <laughs> the last point I can make. No, what was the point? I, I missed the I missed the point. Oh, I was just saying that I wouldn't say for sure that these vegans who have these supplemented levels are below that. No, what were the levels? You, you mentioned levels. You mentioned levels. Just look in the study that the last study I linked in general. Um, okay. Seventeen. I'd have to look at it more. It could be. It could be low. It could be not low. I'm multitasking beyond multitasking right now. Okay, Hold I'm on, looking at this. Where is the study? Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, I want to read this. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should talk about it. I just. It's like if. TMAO is one avenue of risk. Like I'm not like I I'm not gonna ignore it. But if it isn't, then I have no problem being like like I wasn't talking about TMAO at all like a couple months ago. Like, you know, I'm not super invested in it, but I still think it's if it is something that's worth talking about. Anyway, good to talk to you. And uh, all right, thanks, thanks for talking. Yeah, 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 we'll we'll talk. Right. I'll I'll be I'll I'll DM you the uh, Mendelian randomization study. Okay, sounds good. I'll read it. Okay. All right. All right. Good night, man. All right, good night. Bye.